this video focuses on the work of renowned South African photographer David Goldblatt. He was the first South African to be exhibited at the Museum of Modern Art in New York and he's received multiple awards and exhibitions all over the world. I'm going to try and shed some light on who David was as a person and what drove him to produce so many impactful photographs. We'll look at the individual bodies of work and try and identify how all his photographs are bound by a common theme. I met David for the first time in 1987. I was working on a photographic project on a conscientious objector called Ivan Toms. I knew David by reputation and he was definitely the preeminent photographer in South Africa at the time. All the South African photographers from my generation eventually landed up on David's doorstep. I remember it being a daunting task as a young unknown photographer to knock on his door and present my work. Every now and again there was maybe an mmm or a okay, but generally we sat in silence. The only brief moment of relief was when Lily, David's wife, brought some tea and biscuits and smiled at this young, stricken-looking photographer. For 30 years after that meeting, David remained a mentor, but also became a colleague and friend. David was born in a small mining town called Ranfontein outside Johannesburg in 1930. His grandparents had left Lithuania in the 1890s to avoid the persecution that the Jews were experiencing at the time. David's father ran a general dealer store which eventually turned into a men's outfitters. At that time in South Africa, racism was rife, especially in these small mining towns. And when David went to school, he was often bullied and was the target of anti-Semitic abuse. These personal incidents, as well as the general abuse that uh, Jews had received in Europe, I think led to David having a very strong stand against unfairness and his sensitivity to the underdog within society. There's a lot of ways to dissect and analyze the body of work that David produced over his lifetime. He often said that he's done the same thing over and over again throughout his career. In one way, that is true. He was relentless and uncompromising in his scrutiny of the society in which he lived. I think the title of David's 2015 exhibition, The Pursuit of Values, best sums up his aspiration as a photographer. David always resisted the title of artist. This reaction came from a place of working as a photographer during apartheid. It was considered to be exploitive to put a veneer of self-expression over the documentation of people suffering under apartheid. Now that David's not around to chastise me, I'm going to say that his artistry, I think, is best expressed in his ability to clarify exactly what he's trying to say and to remove all inessential details from the frame, but more importantly, his refusal to give the viewer any visual hooks to distract them from the central message of his photographs. I think this is a good example from David's series Boxberg of how he reduces the elements within the frame to the absolute minimum. You've got the figure slightly to the left of center and a slight tonality change in the foreground between the grass and the paved driveway. In the background you've got a house drifting out of the frame on the right hand side and a central streetlight pole which takes your eye into the open space of the sky which takes up almost half of the frame. So when I say there's no hooks I'm talking about visual distractions which would draw your attention away from the subject and in a way to free you from having to feel what it must be like to be that man with, within that desolate and brutal environment. This project was making a statement about the expansion of a whites-only settlement under the apartheid system. 
but it was also a commentary in a similar vein to the work of Robert Adams, in which he is examining the unconscious expansion of human developments and looking at the effect it has not only on the environment, but on the humans that live within those spaces. In my mind, this is one of the most powerfully emotional images within the Boxberg project. The young girl aspires to become a ballerina, but she's limited by her circumstances. The patio beams above and the dark shadows behind her suggest her imprisonment within the limitations of her suburban life. When you have a look at David's structural work, it mirrors the architecture of the apartheid era that is very similar in a way to the Soviet architecture of the 1970s. These structures reflect the defensive nature of the Afrikaner white population to what they perceived as the black threat, but also as a defense against the rest of the world that was extremely critical of the apartheid system. His photographs of the Afrikaner Calvinistic churches similarly reflect the defensive nature of the apartheid regime and how the religion that actually supported the apartheid system was enclosed within structures that were defended against the external world of ideas that threatened their future. One of David's earliest bodies of work called Some Afrikaners Photograph shows a side of David which is very subtle and at times lyrical and captures the spontaneity of human interaction as well as the complex interaction and interdependence between black and white during apartheid. It's interesting that David chose this as one of his first projects bearing in mind the bullying that he received from Afrikaans' children at school. There are no signs within these photographs that David carried any resentment or anger. Although this book has now become a sought-after collectible, at the time David really struggled to get this book published. David's move to colour work and the empty landscapes that he photographed have bewildered some viewers. These 4x5 images are a significant shift in style and in the content. He often referred to them as his fuck-all landscapes. They primarily focus on the Karoo, which is a desert, semi-desert area that makes up the bulk of the center of South Africa. He would say that the turbulent and troubled history of South Africa is a reflection of this vast, harsh and unforgiving space. Seen in isolation, they might be considered to be arbitrary Karoo landscapes. But if you see an exhibition of this work or look at the book, you feel like one of those tired boxes that are shielding themselves from continuous body blows. So what David is doing with these photographs is taking a composite portrait of the soul of the country in order to build a historical account, but also to reveal what lies beneath South Africa in its present form. There's so much more that could be said about David's work, but I wanted to produce an overview that was contained within 10 minutes. If you have interest in any other aspect of David's work, please let me know in the comments below. And thanks, and see you next time.